Well, today's my lucky day because we have Vince here from Huntsville, Alabama. Is that correct? How am I doing right. so far? You're right, Randy. Right? Um, part of the engineering department of yes, Remington. And as an extra special added bonus, you guessed it, <laughs> Ronnie Evans from right here in good old Arkansas. That's right. There you go. Okay. And in your hands, you have a Remington V3 28-inch camo. Yes, sir. So the question is, is what about basic uh, maintenance? Yeah, great. To keep great. your V3 running uh, as good as new. Great question, Randy. I mean, we've been here in uh, northern Arkansas hunting ducks and pheasants for the past couple days. And Randy asked me just to kind of do a quick video for you guys about your basic care, maintenance, uh, tear down of the Remington V3. It's really easy to work on easy to maintain, but uh, if, if you're new to the V3, you might be a little intimidated, it, really with any gun that you've got, brand new, you might be a little intimidated by, by taking it apart, uh, cleaning, but the Remington V3 is really easy to work on, easy to maintain, so we'll just give you a quick little rundown of it. Uh, first thing, uh, really with any shotgun, you're just gonna take off your magazine cap, four inches slips right off the front, you're going to take off your barrel. A couple of unique things about the, the V3 barrel, uh, use the VersaPort gas system, really easy to clean and maintain. Uh, these got uh, gas compensating plugs on them. Easy to remove, you're just going to need to, uh, you can use a, an open end wrench, you can use a punch, whatever you've got that can get a hold of, uh, of your plugs here. Uh, these will thread out and then you're going to remove your gas pistons. And you'll clean your uh, now, the gas pistons themselves. They don't have to be serviced very often. Oh, that's right. Right. Yeah. I mean, up to Remington says up to twenty five hundred rounds. So it's not something around a couple that's rounds not. around the skeet field or opening no. day at dove season. You don't, certainly don't have to remove your pistons. No, you don't. I mean, a lot of rounds on this particular gun right now. It's a little bit bird dirty. So uh, this is a kind of an impromptu video, but uh, you can see they still move very freely. Uh, so I'd say, you know, anywhere 500 rounds or so, uh, it might be not a bad if, idea. If you want to give it optimal wanna, maintenance, yeah, not strictly sure. necessary. So but. when I take these out, these screw out, I, what kind of, what would I expect to see inside or how much buildup would I expect to see after 500 rounds? Much of anything? No, you're not going to see a whole not lot. Not much of anything? No, okay. you're not going to see a lot of that burnt powder gets out of there. So, mm -hmm. uh, but it's a good idea to just to take them apart and scrub it down. And, and you clean it with a 40 caliber brush, I, be, I believe. That's correct. And just That's a correct. basic solvent like hoppies or... Exactly. Pro Cube exactly. or anything like that would work, would it? It would. It would. So, uh, of course, with any barrel, you know, you're going to want to swab out the bore. Uh, you want to check your choke tube, make sure, you know, it's nice and tight. You'll know, periodically remove that and clean it as well just to keep that barrel in top-notch shape. On, on a choke tube, one of the things I like to do is I like to put just a little grease on the thread when I put it in there. So it helps it keep from any, any chance of seizing. If it gets wet, duck hunters get their gun wet, right? So you got a little bit of grease in there, it helps just to, it won't let the choke tube back out, but what it will do is keep it from rusting up. And you can just, when you get ready to change the choke tube out, you got a little lubrication that pops right. Just a little bit of, I use axle grease, red axle grease. Well, what, but, but I've seen you work and your guns do get wet when you duck hunt. Yes, they do, and there's, it's just part and, of the and, and you're proud of it. That's part of it. That's right. Well, let's move on to the action here a little bit. Now, that, the, the magazine tube. Now, is that made of uh, uh, cheap plastic that's or uh, stainless steel? Type, you know, stainless steel. That's the real deal. Yeah, real deal. It just requires a little bit of action clean or something on there. Uh, a little bit of wipe down that will shine right up. Put it on there. You can. This has got a little bit of oil here. Just a little bit. Just like they're shining around it. Yeah, that just takes don't that take residue much. right off. Don't take much at all. Uh, periodically, if you're so inclined, you can remove your magazine spring, take out your follower, really easy to do, just a little quarter turn here on this retainer. Uh, that comes out, spring, follower. Clean and that's, of course, if, if you want to remove the plug and... Oh, exactly, yeah. If you go from duck to pheasant, it works out real well. Exactly, exactly. So, um, don't have a lot, of, a lot of tools here, but uh, actually, they're not really needed. I think you say. <laughs> Uh, one thing we'll do next is really just remove the bolt. So you want to hit the release, let the bolt come forward, just slides all the way forward to its frontmost position. And you need it in this position to remove the handle. You got to remove the handle to get the bolt out. So again, it just comes all the way forward. You want that, that bolt handle just resting on the, the front of the ejection port. And then you're just going to pull that handle right out. 
bolt just lifts right out. Really easy, really easy. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, and then you'll just want to tip it up. You've got guide rods, action springs, a couple of those. Uh, really what, what operates, the, operates the bolt, just those guide rods and springs. And those come out and, that, and that's it, that's it. That's it unless we want to pop the uh, trigger group, right? Oh yeah, that's it for the bolt. Well yeah, let's, uh, let's get that trigger group out. I think it's one of those things you're gonna wanna periodically remove uh, and maintain. Now one thing about this, I, I don't have a lot of tools, but I've got my guide rods here and I can use those uh, really easily to uh, uh, just pop out these uh, trigger plate pins and I'll just put that on there, give it a little whack. There it goes. Two pins and the whole trigger guard pops there right out. There she it. is. That's it. So this obviously you're gonna to wanna to spray with some action cleaner. You're gonna to wanna to get some of the powder residue, really get that off of there. So you'll just spray that. And then you're gonna to wanna to put just, just a light coat of oil. You don't really don't wanna, no, I heavy. don't want a real heavy oil on, on, the, uh, on the fire control, but you'll just wanna brush that off and spray it. Uh, and then maybe blow it out if you've got some air. Uh, and Magic air it. hose, just, that just, saves a lot of time. <laughs> you see how easy that just lift right out? You, you've got your, you know, your receiver left, you'll want to spray that out. Uh, blow it out if you can too, and you know, brush it, brush it if you need to, if you've got some, some build up somewhere, but that's really it. You know, and then you'll want to just put a, a, a light coat of oil on the inside. The V3 really likes a little bit of oil here on the, in, the, in the bolt area, just to run optimally. Um, but, but that's really it. You keep a little bit of oil on this, uh, on this little pocket here in this channel where there's yeah, a little the guide lights. rail. I mean, for lack of yeah, a better just, term for yeah, the yeah, breech block. Just to guide the block. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, so that's it. You know, you'll, you'll, you'll clean it and then, uh, let's, let's go over putting it back together real quick. So I'm going to start, uh, I'm going to start, let's put, let's start with the fire control and pop it back in. One thing you'll notice, you know, it just lays right in. There. There's no latches to manipulate. Uh, just lays right in. You'll line up your uh, pin holes. Are, are the pins identical? They are identical. Okay, because, then, because in some guns you have a longer pin. If you have a two pin trigger guard, uh, they're, they're, they're not interchangeable. Sometimes they're even different diameters, right. but that's not the case here. You don't have to worry the about the, the right pin. Just lay it in there and you got it. Now we, we don't have a hammer with us, so I'm just going to use the forehand. Uh, to act as my hammer and uh, just gonna tap those. Probably buttons. better for the synthetic model than the walnut. <laughs> yeah, I might agree. not do right? the walnut, I agree. Yeah, I agree, I agree. <laughs> All right, you have a little trick for the guide rods. I do, the, the best thing to do is just kind of lay it on its side. You're gonna rest the guide rod in there and just push it back. If you'll just then just. And now the magic of gravity. Yeah, yeah the gravi gravity just kind of holds them in there for you, doesn't it? Just, just go right wow. back. That's it. That's okay. it, they're in. Easy enough. Uh, now your bolt. I will say this about the bolt, it's not neat, it's not necessary, but it's really easy to take this apart again. Toolless uh, disassembly, um, you'll just depress these two uh, rods here, you got your ejector rod, your firing pin, you'll depress those and you remove these two pins, we won't take this apart right now, but then uh, those come out the back with the springs, you can drop your, uh, your bolt carrier, your bolt carrier blocker. Um, if, if the um, shell support will kind of lift out the top, you can use your firing pin, you can drive your extractor spring or ejector, uh, extractor pin out mm -hmm. and remove your extractor. But that's that generally is. not necessary? It's, it's really not, Randy, it's not necessary at all. Uh, you, mean you might want to do it like annually yeah, or something, something like right that, like an annual season, plane. maybe, that type of thing? Yeah, if, okay. you, if you have a, if you, yeah, if you need to, uh, but most of the time it's good enough just to kind of spray it. Uh, brush it off. Um, you won't probably want to put a little oil in here in the cam pin area, uh, a little oil on it just to protect the metal and to make it run, you know, optimally. Again, we're using, we've got a water fire model here and it's going to get wet. If, if we get this bolt wet, all right, and there's mm -hmm. some guys in the world, not like, not myself, but I find these pieces rusty, a little rust on them. How should I worry about that? Should I just use and just clean it up and keep trucking? Use a little little rim oil if we see like rust on the spring, or should we be concerned with those types I, of things? I, I wouldn't really. Okay. You know, heavy rust maybe, but I, I really wouldn't expect these. All of these internal components are, are coated. 
Uh, oh, to resist okay. rust, uh, you've got nickel plating uh, on your bolt carrier here, nickel plating uh, on your, your bolt head. And so, um, you know, generally, generally not an issue, but yeah, you want to just scrub them off. If you'll keep a little bit of rim oil on there, no it shouldn't really be a problem. So if the gun takes a swim, you're slowly going to, you're going to want to dry things out and give, yeah, it, yeah. give it a drop or two of your favorite oil. Whether it's brake free CLP or rem oil cubed or whatever. Whatever it is, sure. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. Yeah. I mean, uh, rust normally means neglect. It does. And it's easy to do because waterfowl guns get wet. They, they get used pretty hard. They do. They and do. if, you know, they, if they go in the case, you forget about them for a couple of weeks yeah. uh, too late. That point, rust is set in, right. So, but with having these plated parts and, and things of that nature, that helps cut down on those on those moving parts that would cause a function issue, right? Oh, it sure does. So that's, that's pretty cool to know that that's done that way too. Sure does. Okay. All right, so we want to put the bolt back in. Super easy to do here. Um, if you just want to make sure this bolt carrier, this bolt carrier has really, let me set that down a second. It's got two positions, all right? It's got a forward position and a rearward position. Works best to just put that in the rearward position. Hold your, uh, your receiver vertically, and then you can just put in your, your bolt and just kind of just lays right in there. Nothing to manipulate, nothing to move out of the way, uh, just lays right in there. And the trick here really is if you'll just use your left hand, hold that bolt carrier down against, you can feel a little bit of the spring pressure right. from the action spring. Push it flush there. Push it flush to the front of the receiver. What that's going to do then is it perfectly lines up this um, bolt handle notch here. So you can pop that right in. Bolt handle slot, just pops right in. Awesome. And then pull it back, lock it open. Now that bolt handle is will not come out unless that it's bolt all the way forward. is all the way forward in that forward most position right there. And the only way to achieve that is with the barrel off the gun. With the barrel off the gun. So you, you, you can't never have to worry about losing that. You don't. Awesome. You don't. So well, one thing I really like is about having the action springs right here in the receiver is all the gunk and rust and mud and earth and stuff that you get in the mainspring that would be in, in most auto loaders or pumps for that matter. It's, it's like, eliminated. Never right, gets back there. Right. You never have to check it. You never have to take off the butt stock. No. Ever. You There'd don't. be no reason. There's no reason. Yep. No. There, it's, there's it's, nothing it's, there that's going to fill full of gunk or powder yeah. residue or anything. It's just... And when Not part that, of the action. Yep, exactly, yep. Randy, yeah. And when you've got that fire control, you've got easy access to get in, in there and get get all those internals really cleaned out cleaned nice. Out. Awesome. So you got your bolt locked back. Next step, we're just going to slide our barrel back on here. Drops, drops in. Four ends back on. Cap. Nice and sweet. And it's just go? that easy. It's that wow. easy. Happy hunting. Stay safe. Okay. Thanks, Vince. You're welcome. Thanks, Ron. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.